Hi and welcome to Extronical. This is episode one of the Space Invaders build and programming. Um, so if you've not seen the episode where we connect up uh, an OLED to an Arduino and get that working, you should look back at that. Uh, there will be a little um, clickable box coming up on the screen now. So at the moment we've got an OLED screen connected to an Arduino, the Arduino Nano, it's a clone. Um, so all I've done, I've got the positive of the Arduino going down to a positive rail here along the bottom. Uh, the ground of the Arduino going along to a ground rail at the bottom. Then the screen, positive and ground connected up to that rail. Um, the SCK of this screen is the green wire and that's going to A5 of the Arduino. And the orange wire is the SDA, the I2C uh, bus that we're using. And that goes to the A4 of the Arduino. Again, that's just a rush through. Uh, if you're not sure about that, see the previous video. So going back to the software, we aim today is we'll see how far we get. I want to make this video no longer than about 15 minutes long if I can. Um, we're just going to see if we can get an actual Space Invader character on screen and moving if we can. So we've got our basic uh, setup and loop structures. If you've watched the previous video, one of the first couple of things we need to have is the Adafruit libraries for both the uh, driver and the graphics routines that we are going to make use of from Adafruit. So well, that's the driver. Just move my mouse away a little bit there. So that's the driver, and that's my phone going off. But I will get a message when I'm doing a video. Would you believe it? So anyway, we'll not we'll not read that. So we've got the graphics driver. So basically, that's the driver, and that's the graphics routines that that we'll use with that driver. Um, we're just going to start off getting our display up and running. Make sure we can still display a simple message. And the way we do that is in the setup. We need to. Um, oh, sorry. There's something before the setup. You have to have a line that uses the Adafruit object for this display. Object is from object oriented program, programming um, basically if you're not too familiar with that just think of what I'm doing here this bit is a type like an integer, a float, a string this is a type, it's of a type of what Adafruit have created for the display so I'm going to create a variable called display and that will be of that type for the initialization routine for that, we actually pass in any number. The actual number, when I looked at the source code, actually means the reset line pin of the display, or something like that anyway. My display certainly doesn't have any sort of re hardware reset capability, so the numbers doesn't seem to make any difference whatsoever, so I'm just going to put a 1 in. Uh, and then in my setup, I need to... Um, I'll just copy this. I've got this over here. We, we start off, we're going to initialize the display here basically and tell um, the Adafruit object whereabouts that uh, display is on the I2C bus, which address it is. There is a long constant Adafruit um, use, which I've seen off some code uh, that I've looked at that they use. Uh, basically, look at their demo code, then it does have. This constant is um, constant in. I'm not sure what it does, but it does the job, so I keep using it. Um, and then I'm going to put in um, a constant myself, which everybody has their own kind of um, conventions for constants. There are some that most C people will try and adhere to. Me personally, I've been programming in many languages over a long period of time. Um, I tend to use all uppercase for constants, is what I tend to do. So I'm going to add that constant and it will be, so let's make sure we get into the right case there. So it will be, for this display I happen to know that its address is hex 3c. I'm just going to put a little comment in here that these are all my display, display, display settings. Okay, so that should initialize the display, and that's all we really need to do in there. In the loop, we're now going to um, clear display. Which if you don't, you can blend left with some garbage from a previous 
uh, run through we're going to set the text color which I find generally because um, we're going to just do a quick test to make sure the display is working by sending some text um, generally and phones are going off again and it rarely does but while I'm making a video it will do we're just going to ignore it uh, generally um, if you don't set the text color as white it tends to default for black and on a, a, a black graphic on a black display is going to not show up it's not going to be there um, we're going to set the cursor Oops. so we've always got to use this object called display created there and we're going to set the cursor uh, let's just put that to a period and we're going to set it to the top left of the screen so on all computer to screens and there are reasons why they start like start where the screen's organized like this generally on graph paper you would start down in the bottom left on computer screens zero zero is top left there are reasons to do with that in the fact that um, what we're going to in great detail it's to do with uh, very early computers and memory and how it mapped the very start of memory which would be your very first position of the screen but old-fashioned monitors scan from top to bottom so the very first position on screen will be at the top and so get the situation where it's kind of opposite to what you normally do on graph paper um, so display and um, space invaders so let's just see uh, I know that won't work I was going to say let's go see if that works what's happened here is we've told it to print space invaders which it will to an internal area of the display in fact it's not even on the displays um, sort of own memory at the moment it's actually um, stored within your Arduino ready to be sent to display so you can do all sorts of printing and graphics and then you send it all at once this works out much quicker so once we've happy with whatever we're putting on the screen then we say display it and this looks a little bit odd because we're saying display display but all we've got we've got the display object and then we're just telling that display object to display whatever we've currently written on the screen or in the sort of hidden memory area that's about to go to the screen. Uh, it doesn't take any parameters and I think I've done everything right so I'm going to um, compile and upload that. Okay so it's uploading so this is where I find out whether it's worked and it has and I'm actually fairly impressed I've not made a single typo or missed off a semicolon or anything there which is quite rare the next thing we need to do is to draw a bitmap and then we are going to see if we've got time I think we will have to actually move that bitmap so we are going to use one of the Space Invaders characters um, now in a black and white display, display if a pixel is set it's basically a 1 if it's not set it's basically zero so we're talking about um, binary bits and binary zeros so I've got the Space Invaders character um, somewhere if I just bring up the folder okay I've got an invader um, bitmap format I'm going to open it up in paint I'll have a quick look at that and we'll zoom in quite a lot now I got this off um, uh, the website of the Space Invaders graphics um, and these are our pixels of that Space Invaders we can put a grid on which we'll need to do to make things obvious where the pixels are now there is some software called LCD Assistant which is supposed to age in this when I first used it when I was first messing about a couple of months back uh, I got it running Norton certainly wasn't happy about it my antivirus software uh, complained about it a lot but I, I got it going and in the end it still didn't work properly it didn't create the data for that character to put into my program that I needed so the way I've done it for now and I may go back although I did have a look at LCD assistant uh, a couple of days ago trying to install it again Norton is so not happy you never say that uh, I'm happy with it it then still deletes it so I'm trusting Norton at the moment there's something not quite right there um, it certainly is um, not straightforward to, to use or it didn't work as well so I'll open up my Space Invader character this is how I did it just shrink that other window down I got the character put it into paint I can see all the uh, pixel masks and then I would actually store them as data in the actual program so we'll create a little um, area here 
or graphics or graph spot right now and we're going to create a character and always follow this format it's going to create that kit space invasion space, space invaders character so it's a static constant unsigned not any sign because char means we're going to use a byte and then we have this directive basically a special command um, for the um, Atmel uh, processors, they are relatively low on memory, 32k is not a lot, uh, and that's for the program memory, and about 2k or so um, for the dynamic memory where we would store variables. Now usually graphics you would store in dynamic memory um, generally. Um, just finished it off. So I'm going to go, so this is the middle invader, so you have a top invader, middle invader, a bottom invader. Um, but if we used to try and store all the graphics of a game, and graphics are quite memory intensive, um, we would quickly run out of that dynamic memory. So we have this directive to try and force it to store data in the program memory. We've got a rather luxurious 32K compared to the 2K of dynamic memory. And the way I would do this is just bring, I'll just shrink this window down a little bit. I've got my Space Invaders character there. And I would say a B, which means I'm working as a byte, or rather binary, sorry, so I'm going to do a byte of 8 bits. And I'm going, look, the first one, and it's knowing it's putting this little um, sort of like splodge over there, uh, but the first one here, the top left, is a zero. So I'm going across there, and look and see if I can take that off. I think it's the brush or something. Let's see if we can just select maybe pencil. That's better. So that one there is empty. So that's going to be a zero. And the next one is also empty. So the next one's going to be zero, etc. And then I've got a one, and then a zero, zero, zero. Now at this point, I am counting how many zeros and ones I've used. When I've got to eight, that's one byte, and I need to start another one. So at the moment, I've got one, two, three, four, six, seven. Is that right? Seven, yeah. So I need another one. So I've gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the next one is a one. And then I've got um, some zeros. If I counted that correctly, just double check that. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's right, actually. So I will carry on like that, and I'll go to the next byte and copy in and copy in and copy in the data. If this was only eight bits wide, I wouldn't need to go to a second byte because I know it goes over that. Then I will need to to save time just off screen I've got this data already prepped um, for the middle invader and there it is so now we need to know to actually um, plot that graphic on screen and the way we do that is let's put it in this bit else it won't display so we're going to again write to the display or to the hidden area of the display before we actually display all that bit that we've been writing so display and it's draw this is again an Adafruit um, routine. I'm going to draw a bitmap, and the first parameter is how far across the screen, so the exposition. So I'm going to say zero. I'm going to say 20 down, so it's a little bit under my text here. Um, and then I'm just going to copy this because the next one is your actual graphics pointer. You point away graphics here, so I'm saying it's this at the start of this graphic data here. You have to have your width. Now your width is the widest point, point of your graphics. So where you can see the last one is where you need to go. So that's 8, 9, 10, 11 is the width. Notice that I have to pad out the byte with zeros for what, even though I'm not using anything over here as well. And then it's the height. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 8 in height. And you have to tell it a colour. Well, there's only one colour on the display. And whether I put white, blue, whatever, it'll still pretty much come out as white. That should be it. We'll try uploading that as well. And we made a little mistake. Uh, expected a comma uh, or a semicolon before the edit. Right, basically, I've missed a semicolon off the end of that um, punch data there. So we'll try uploading again.
Okay, and that's uploading. So hoping we'll still see the same text. We should have a space invader character just below it. Okay, so we'll try and finish off. We'll see if we can make that character move. Um, and all we need to do to that is have some sort of uh, display loop. So where we're going around, we need to actually create a variable. And um, we'll just put it here quickly. So, and because this is not how it's going to end up, we're just going to have a quick demo of if I could get the case right x plus equals zero that's an integer and we're going to put that into there and then it'll display that at zero and then after it's displayed it we're going to x plus x plus plus equals one which means we add x to one to x plus and so it'll move it along and when when I'm saying what I'm saying if x pars is the read of the screen is 128 so if it's more than 127 because actually it starts at 0 to 127 which gives it 128 pixels if it's more than that we'll reset x pars back to 0 and that should have a space invader character going across the screen and start again so if we've got success here And we're uploading. So what we're open to see now is a space invader character go right across the screen. And there we go. And it gets to the end and just goes off. It should pop on the other side. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. In the next episode, we'll tie that up a little bit because that's not really how we're going to make space invaders move. It's just so you can see something graphically moving across the screen and how we might do that. Um, but we're looking to actually. Um, setting up some types, not types, sorry, some structures to hold Space Invader information right where they're displayed. And we'll actually, hopefully, in the next episode, get most, if not all, the Space Invaders on screen, the other graphics in it, things, and th the other graphics and stuff in, etc. Uh, so like and subscribe. Episode 2 should be out in about a week's time. Okay, thanks very much. Bye.